Block contracting. And live merit pricing. I'm going to tell you like, and boy, oh boy, oh boy, like many things, live merit pricing, I'm going to tell you that the National Farmers Organization is first. There are many people talking about pricing the better hogs higher and the more highly finished hogs at a lower price. There's lots of people talking about it. But we're doing it. Live merit pricing is nothing more than a, uh, establishing a premium payment uh, by the packer for the more desirable number one and two hogs. And you can mark my words that this will be part of our future. The ball is just rolling in our court first. A formulated market is nothing more than establishing a premium on an already established market. The premium to be negotiated for. An example of a formulated market is just exactly that. It is an example because I did not use their block uh, of a formulation that was put together for the state of Minnesota. The Iowa market, which Merle talked about uh, in 1975, was quoted as a number one to three market. Iowa today is quoted as a one and two market. That 75 cents is an additional 75 cents over the Iowa number one and two market for number one and two hawks. Plus 40, 40 cent services with the trucking paid by the packer. with all months contractual options. And the other is forward contracting. Marketing hogs in the future without risk of what will my price be. And that's why many of you started this organization because you wanted to change going to the marketplace asking what will my price be. Your opportunity to go out into the future and establish your cost of production plus a fair and equitable return on your investment. Cost of production plus a reasonable profit. We came to the convention last year and I sold hard on forward contracting. And I came back this year and I am going to sell on it again. And I am going to show you why. Very simple graph. The dotted line is nothing more than the practical top of the Iowa market for 1981 and 1982. The dark colored line is a group of producers that have used the forward contracting program for the past two years and most of them are contracted up already into 1983. You've got to note the number of times are 15. Don't try to count them. They're there. That through forward contracting, they received over $50 for their hogs. 
On the dotted line, there are nine. We just simply do not sell hogs twice or three times a year anymore. We sell our hogs on a consistent basis almost across this country. Some by the week, some by the bi-monthly, some monthly. But almost every month we sell our production. The average Iowa market for the last two years is $49.07. The average of that dark line is $51.60 or a $20 a head profit on all the hogs the man sold, the men sold, for the past two years. This to me is a comparison of a program marketing situation and disposal selling. You can control your own destiny, I believe that. They will not sell you out when you're making a profit and programming your operation on an ongoing basis. This is the Iowa market for 1981 and 1982. Same markets, I just put one on top of the other one. And I put it up there for a purpose. Many of you have been to a meeting and saw Gary Ellis or someone get up in front of a, a group of people and show them what this organization can do through collective bargaining with feeder cattle. I thought last year at the convention that we had a real opportunity and we could do the same thing in hogs. And I was my own worst skeptic. In my gut, I did not know whether it would work, but it works. In 1981, when I came to the National Farmers Organization, I came in April, and this organization was putting on a push for forward contracts. And I was lost touch in the country. I was not aware of even what was available and I came in and I felt like a, a dumb turd because I didn't really know what was going on. And I couldn't believe that we had this available to us. And we did push forward contracting. And I want you to see the trend line of the market while we were selling forward contracts. And you look at that market and it rises and it goes up to the upper $40 level. It peaks at something just over $50. And guess what happened? Gary calls it people became uncontractable. I'm going to tell you people quit forward contracting hogs because they already had their cost of production plus a profit and they didn't figure they had to go out and contract any more hawks. There is a month in the fall, the October futures market is just like April. It always lags behind the other quoted months and people just seem to kind of want to stay away from it. Boy, you know, I, I really don't want to take a couple dollars left, less for those darn hogs. And that's what the futures market's telling me it's going to be. And you know the futures market, uh, as much as we don't like it for some things, it's, it's right a lot of times. And the trend lines are absolute. We built the market, we quit, and the market started to drop. And we came to the convention in Indianapolis, and I told you to contract your hogs at a cost of production. 
and I'm not going to apologize to anybody today for talking about it last year because I am damn proud of what we in the home office and the producers in this organization did for our market in 1982. This is where we talked at the convention. This is where we started pushing and we built the market. And we started selling hogs and the market went to 48, 51, 57, 60, and someone said it's going to 70 and we quit. Seventy dollar ho hogs were inevitable. Now we had a lot of pressures on a lot of people at that time because many had sold their hogs for ten and twelve dollars less than the futures market they were delivering on. And there was a psychological pressure in the country and they said no more. I lost X number of dollars. You didn't lose a dime. You put the market where it was in 1982. Through forward contracting, you took the hogs out of the marketplace and made the, the packers of this country become competitive. It was not only the National Farmers Organization. We took thousands of hogs off the marketplace that were no longer available to buy. The bidding was let on the hogs that were left over. And you did it. You're going to share it with a sandwich that took over the front end meat of the hog, in particular the picnic and the butt, and put a demand on it. But there is no one, no one that will ever convince me that you were not an integral part of the 1982 market. And you tell me what's wrong with selling hogs at $20 a head profit and selling 30 to 50 percent so the balance of your hogs can be sold higher? Is that not collective bargaining? Is that not establishing what the people who started this organization did it all for? That's what I believe. I believe it is. And I am very, very proud of the people who put the doggone thing together and went out and contracted their hogs and yet you raised it for Joe Blow down the road who you don't really care about and he's always been kind of a ding-dong in your area and has not participated and not helped you and you helped his market but you helped yours and you helped your country. We listened about it last night. And I think it's very important. And there's all kinds of you sitting out there and saying, we didn't set no market. We killed 16, 18 percent less hogs in 1982. The USDA said we were gonna. Finally. This is the 1981 markets by month. This is the 1982 markets by month. This is the difference of the FIS slaughter, which is the federally inspected slaughter in this country. It happens to run about 95% of the commercial slaughter. 
This is the difference in the money. Think about supply and demand and look, go across the month of March and the month of June. The difference in the monies separates by only four cents. The difference in the number of hogs separates, separates by over 13%. In April and July, we have a very consistent percentage difference in hogs. We have a money difference just about three bucks. Now, we didn't kill 16 to 18% less hogs, and you can put take those months. With that one doggone exception in July, now, I don't like it to be there, but it's factual, and it's there, and there's no sense uh, telling anybody it's not. You're going to tell me in August when we set new highs in the market in 1982 with 6.2% less hogs, you're going to tell me you didn't have something to do with it? No one can debate that with you. It's your story. And you can be proud of it. I want to go back and repeat something again. Selling 30 to 50 percent of your hogs at 20 or $25 a head profit so the balance of your hogs can be sold higher is good business and real good common sense to me. But again, I want to tell you that the old McRib sandwich. It's heck to have to share share your success with a sandwich, but I don't think it's that bad. Was extremely important. The front end meat of a hog, you have to understand, is generally a drag on the product price. And in fact, what the McRib sandwich did is take just about take charge of the front end of that hog. And the packer did not have to worry about getting rid of the picks and the butts off the pigs because he already knew where they were going. Now, if you scrape most of the sauce off that thing, it's a pretty doggone good pork sandwich. In fact, uh, I think it's very good. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. I've ate them a couple times, and it, and it honestly tastes to me like they put a half a pound of brown sugar in there, and it's so sweet I can't hardly stand it. But I can scrape it off, and it just tastes pretty doggone good. And if you carry a little bottle of hot sauce along with you, real good. Last year, we showed you a five-year average of hogs. And we put a great deal of emphasis on it. And I do think it's very important because it tells us what has been for the past five years. And I want you to, to remember that bottom figure down there, 42-42. That was last year's five-year average. Now, my figure wasn't exactly that because I predicted uh, forty-two dollar hogs, I think, in December last year, and the market actually averaged under forty. 
So I came speculating on a little better market in December than what actually came about. Now that was the five-year average we brought last year. Just so happens I have a current one. Just happened to put this thing together. And I'll tell you what, 1982 looks extremely good. You know, we started out with intentions, and I think all on very honest intentions, uh, almost nationwide within the total industry, wondering what would that daggone market be. And everybody saying, it can't go. People didn't predict Mother Nature. And I'll tell you what, anybody that can could make a lot of money in this country. I, I understand there's a woman in Chicago that's got a cat that does about as good a job of predicting weather as, as anybody else. But some things happened. Some loaning institutions, as Merrill talked about, refused to make loans on hogs. However, I know many people within this organization went to their loaning institution with a contract option and, in fact, borrowed money. But things were made very difficult by an extremely fast-rising market on feeder pigs to lock them in at anything, uh, even remotely catch a profit. But it took $60 hogs to bring that thing to fit $45.24. And that's five years. That's the last five, the most current five. There's got to be something wrong with that. And I know all of you know what's wrong with it. It's too damn low. Even though we just went through what has to be a very successful year for a lot of hog producers. In fact, we all know that if a man was out there just raising hogs, it was extremely successful for him. If he happened to be a diversified farmer, he just simply took money from here and paid the bills over here. And we all know it. But it took a, a remarkable year this year in 1982 to bring our five-year average where still recognized none average over in excess of $50. I apologize. This is, is the five-year average based on the practical top. This market here is the five-year average based on the interior practical top for the last five years, based on hogs between 210 and 240. This is not the average. The USDA average is lower than this by quite a bit. This is the top of the market for the top weight hogs. And I'm sorry I did not make that clear. We're going to talk about it before we're over. Before we're going to talk about it before we're through today, sir. It's the most important overlay that I'm going to show you today. It is something that we talked about last year, and I will talk about forever. It is something that every businessman has to know. You cannot sell something for a profit if you don't know how much it's costing.
This is not one or two producers. This is a composite, a consolidation of many ferro to finish producers who some have computers, some don't have computers. They all keep excellent records. And I called them and they told me what it cost them to produce feeder pigs to 40 pounds. And I had a range from about 26 to $30. And I simply went down the middle. I plugged in $3 corn and the only way I know to get $3 today is to seal it. Now I know in fact if you are a grain farmer, $3 may not be enough. But uh, I did not use the value of corn if you had to sell it off the combine this year if you were lucky enough to have it dry enough to sell. But a cost of production that figures on the bottom line, that's a good deal, drop it. <laughs> to a 220 pound hog to $42.59. If you happen to be feeding those hogs in a non-confinement system, uh, we can remove the buildings and equipment depreciation and drop that son of a gun all the way down to just over 38 and a half bucks. That, if you buy feeder pigs, you know is a variable. It will change all the time. I took the figures on November 24th on a feeder pig composite that I get across U.S. Market News Service and used simply $48. And from one day to the next, we all know it'll change. It's simply up there to show you, to give you an idea. Uh, you all need to do your own. I'm not telling anyone in this room that this is your cost of production. Because I know you may have some other variables. You may be able to do it cheaper than what I have here. It may cost you more. It all figures on the bottom of this son of a gun to come out to $51.68 on a $48.40 pound feeder pig using the same costs as I did on the ferro to finish operator except for the feeder pig cost where in fact what we've done is we've paid the man who raised the feeder pig $20 a head. Now I think those are very, very important. Summarize a little. Your five-year average, current, five-year average was $45.24. Your cost of production for a ferro to finish operator may range from $38.5 to $42.5 depending on your operation. You have had the opportunity in the past six months to lock in your $20 to $25 a head profit on many months in the future. But you're still thinking about the fact that I hate to minimize my gain.
Got any ideas what that might be? <coughs> this lower line is the market line for the practical top in the state of Iowa for 1975. This line is the market line for the practical top on the interior of Iowa for 1982. Can you see a correlation in those lines? I happen to think there's a remarkable similarity in the trends of those two lines. The experts say we are on a seven and then a 21 year cycle. In other words, seven years we just went through. 1982, seven years, we broke the last high markets of 1975. We exceeded, we set new highs then in fact, if they are correct, it will be the year 2003 before we exceed the markets this year. I don't want to have a damn thing to do with it. Because I think, in fact, we can do something about it. That's what happened in 1976. And there's a whale of a lot of you that remember it. Now, don't take me wrong. I am not standing up here today telling you that 1983 will be a 1976. But of course, you don't control the price of your product yet, unless you contract it. I don't know, factually, and neither does anyone else, what the markets will be in 1983. There are those who predict $50 hogs in the first quarter, $50 to $55 in the second quarter, and through the summer months, with a market uh, toward the end of the year in the middle 50s. There are others that say range of predictions from the mid 50s in 1983 to low 60s for the summer market to $50, back to $50 in the last quarter. In a recent meeting in Montevideo, Minnesota, there was a marketing meeting where the people were told that $60 hogs would be absolute in 1983. Milton Madison, uh, an economic an analyst, says first quarter hogs next year will be $57. Second quarter hogs will be 58. Third quarter, 61. Fourth quarter, 60. An average price in 1983 of $59, Iowa. I will predict this, that in the first quarter of next year, we will have 50 to $55 hogs. In the second quarter, 49 to 55. In the third quarter, 54 to 58. And in the fourth quarter, 45 to 50. Are you confused?
so are a lot of people. Take a look at them. See all those names? Some are very familiar, some are not. You ever seen any of them names on your checks you pay your bills with? No, you haven't, and you're not gonna. They're not around when it's delivery time. We all know this country needs more farm dollars. I don't think there's any question about that. But you had better remember that you still do not control the price of your product unless you contract it. We are not there yet, and I hope you don't take offense when I say we because I, am, I cannot be a member because I am not a farmer. The producers in this room who don't think that in 1983 we can't have a 19, another 1976 are dreamers. Because in fact we can. We're not going to sit here today and try to predict what in fact the market will be next year. You all can establish your market in 1983. You all have the opportunity. And before the first of the year we will have a contracting program nationwide where I don't care if you are in Florida or the state of Oregon or Washington, you will have the availability, availability to forward contract hogs in lots as small as 7,500 pounds or approximately 35 head. It will in fact give everyone the opportunity to price his product. What this organization has talked about since day one. I recommend always to all producers that they contract 30 to 50 percent of their hogs at that cost of production plus a profit. I always I, I use 20 to 25 dollars because I think that that figure uh, is a good figure to work for. You can establish your own. I will not dictate to any of you and those in this room who use the program know that I do not dictate to you. I don't want to be your dictator. I, I want to be as much of an asset as I can to help you. In the past, when your ancestors went west, there were very few who went alone. Most were intelligent people and smart enough to go in groups. Today in marketing, we have a few that know it has to be done together. And then we have those who seem to remember next year it will be better. You people are not only the life's blood of this organization, but in fact you are the life's blood of this country. You must continue to tell your story. There are an awful lot of people out there that want to hear it. I'm going to end this meeting the same way I ended last year. Because I still think that it pertains and it will never change. 
because it is not the critic who counts and it's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbled or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes short again and again, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, and spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, fails while daring so greatly that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who knew neither victory nor defeat. I remain very proud to be in the arena with all of you. I thank you very much for the opportunity to come to your convention in Louisville and be with you. Thank you.